Welcome back everyone! Our DIY CNC machine video got lots of attention as well as requests for a more detailed walkthrough. So in this video, we'll show you a close-up of our homemade CNC mill. So we built this machine out of pure rocks and epoxy around a steel frame, and you can get more information on that process in our video in the link above. But for now, we'll show you the machine after about 16 months of use. We'll start by talking about the spindle head which holds the main spindle unit that spins whatever BT40 tools we put in it. The spindle is held on by a massive cast iron block of material which is coated with this red rust preventative paint. This entire setup is attached to the Z axis of the machine via this welded steel extension. Which as a reminder, we cut on a water jet machine, then assembled like a puzzle, welded together and surfaced on a manual mill for a precision fit. Lastly, we filled it up with epoxy granite to make it more rigid, heavier and less likely to vibrate. So again, this holds the spindle which is spun via a belt connected to our 7 horsepower servo motor in the back there. Now, it can spin any tool as long as it has a tapered BT40 shape, and these tool holders are held in place by these studs. For the shaft in here to grab the studs, we need to press down on the shaft at the top, and once we do that, the grippers open. To press down on this, we need one ton of force, which we produce with this pneumatic hydraulic cylinder. Pneumatic cylinders of this diameter can't produce one ton of pressing force. So we have them press a hydraulic piston, which amplifies the force down below using this hydraulic fluid. And well, that's how we produce enough force to change the CNC tools. Now, before we move on to showing the counterweight mechanism, a very popular request we had was to show how we line the rails. So I'll let Dave quickly explain that. So as our dial test indicated, we have an 800 micron offset over the 90 centimeter long rails. What that means is that two points on these side of the rails are 800 microns closer to each other than the same two points on the opposite side of the rails. So if we move our dial indicator all the way to the back here, as you can see, we've set it to zero, zero. Now every one circle on this dial represents one millimeters. So as we swoop back all the way to the other side, we can see the dial indicator moving roughly 800 microns. Now to account for this, what we did is tighten the two bolts, the last bolts on the rails. This allows us to rotate the rails and that would be our pivot point. Take a look what happens to the dial indicator as I pull these two rails apart they bring us closer to the zero point. So our next step is for me to pry these apart from each other while Alan tightens down the bolts. And that's how we get our perfect alignment and the two rails are going to be perfectly parallel to one another. Moving on to the top here, we have a servo motor that spins a five millimeter pitch ball screw, which lifts this entire Z axis assembly. This weighs an insane 200 kilograms. So instead of letting the motor do all the lifting, we attached a counterweight on the back, which also weighs exactly 200 kilograms. We attach this with chains that span all the way from the Z axis frame around some idler sprockets that were mounted into a slotted steel block with a bolt through it, and then the chain travels all the way down to our 200 kilogram of pure hot rolled steel. Why hot rolled steel? Because it was the cheapest form of steel available for us locally. But this isn't just suspended in air. To prevent it from rotating or swinging back and forth, we mounted it to these linear rails on the back. These are super cheap and a great addition to this counterweight mechanism. Here's a quick shot of how the counterweight slides when we move the Z axis up and down. Now, many people asked about tramming, or more specifically, how do we account for any angle offsets in the column relative to the cutting table, whether it's front and back or left and right. And this here is our mechanism. We have these three half inch bolts on each side that pull the column down into the base. We can loosen those up and use the 3 8 bolt to push down on the base and elevate the column. This design worked really well and we confirmed the parallelness of these axes with a dial indicator. More specifically, we would attach a dial indicator to our freely spinning tool and then we would bring the Z axis all the way down to the table, touch our dial indicator on the right of the table, turn the spindle all the way 180 degrees and probe the left side of the table, and then we would do it all around as well until we got the spindle to be perfectly in line with the table. So you can imagine we had this probe attached up on the spindle, and we would move it around to find the height difference between the right and left side of the table relative to the spindle. We keep iterating left to right, then back and forth. Once the machine was properly trammed and aligned, it was ready to make precision parts. To find the origin of our stock material, we prefer to use this 3-axis Hamer Edge probe. 
Once it's inserted in the spindle, we probe the inside of the aluminum until the dial arrow hits zero. Then we zero the x-axis on our screen. Now we probe the other side of the x-axis and divide the difference by two. This gives us the perfect center of our aluminum stock in the x direction. We do the same for the y minimum and y maximum of our stock, and then when we jog the x0, y0, we are perfectly in the center of the block. Now we just zero the z-axis the same way and we're ready to start machining. We begin by inserting our carbide 3 flute aluminum cutter, which just rips through aluminum. With the pocket complete, we face the top of the part just to make sure that it's parallel to the features of our pocket. This also just gives the part a really clean look, so it's worth the extra effort. Our last step is to break all sharp corners with a chamfer bit, followed by cleaning off all the coolants. And voila, we have a perfectly machined part. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time.